this video, we're going to recreate this Irish logo design in Hatch. We'll start by using a true type font, then we'll break it apart, use the weld tool to put the R and the H back together, change the fill type and direction, add a border, use the knife tool to cut each letter for stripes, change the colors, do some resequencing, replace the dot over the I with a shamrock that we dig out of the monogram ornaments library, and then we'll digitize the hat. In other words, we're going to be using a lot of Hatch tools in this video. You will need Hatch version 2 to do it the way I do it here. So I do have a teeny bit of Irish ancestry, and since St. Patrick's Day is next month, I decided on a simple logo we could create without any artwork. I've chosen the colors based on the Irish flag, so let's get started. So in a new design window, I'm going to click on the lettering and monogramming toolbox, click on lettering, and I'm going to type in my word Irish, and I'm using a true type font for this, so I have this set to true type, and the font I'm using is called Seagull. Just type in S, go down a few more, and I use Seagull Bold, and I set it to 50 millimeters. Now there are probably more Celtic or Irish looking fonts on my system, but I needed a fat font for this, so that's why I chose this one. And we're looking at this without true view on, and you can see these are really long stitches, and since they're satin stitches, they're not going to stitch because those little dotted lines tell us we're not going to be able to stitch. But doesn't matter, we're going to do something different. So I do need to adjust my spacing a little bit, so I'm going to select the text, and I'm going to change the letter spacing to 3. Zoom out a bit by pressing the minus key, then I'm going to create a satin border. So go to the Create Layouts toolbox, click on Create Outlines and Offsets. want to make sure that I have Outline checked as a satin, and we'll leave it at black. Make sure Offsets is unchecked, and click OK. There's our border. Now I'm going to select the lettering, and I'm going to break it apart so that it's no longer lettering. So on the Edit Objects toolbox, click Break Apart. First time breaks it down to letters, select that again, and break apart again, and now we just have objects. I don't need the dot over the I, so I'm going to select that and delete that. The L is one letter, the R is made up of a couple of pieces, so I'm going to select those, and on the digitize toolbox, I'm going to select weld. And what this will do is it will merge all those pieces together into one object. We'll do the same thing with the H. Now I want to select all of the letters, change it to Tatami, go to the Edit Objects toolbox, and click Remove Stitch Angles, and on the Stitching tab, I'm going to set my stitch angle to zero. So that makes all the stitches horizontal. If I turn on True View, you can see what we have so far. Nothing terribly interesting yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ruler guides, and this will just help me make all my splits at the same place. I like to use rulers, and when I use rulers, a lot of times I'll turn the grid off. So let's just turn the grid off. To place a horizontal ruler, I'm just going to click on this sidebar, drag it up to where I want it, and let's, um, let's hide these. Right click, hide selected, adjust that just a teeny bit there. Then I'm going to place another ruler line right there. Now I want two more ruler lines in here, but I want them evenly spaced. So here's a little trick. Go to the Digitize Toolbox, just create a rectangle that's just between those two guides, and now I'm going to size it. Press O to select it. I'm going to resize it by a third, 33% and I'm just going to drag it up so it matches the top, use a ruler line there, drag it down, put another ruler line there, and now I have evenly spaced ruler guides. So the next thing we want to do is cut our letters so that we can color the individual stripes. When we do that, we're going to use a knife tool. So the knife tool is right here, and if we use the knife tool, when we don't have a selection, let's say I'm just going to cut this, notice that even though I had these hidden, it still cut them. 
When you don't have a selection, the knife tool will cut through everything that's underneath. So I'm going to undo, undo that. And I'm going to show all, unhide all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these. I'm actually going to cut those. Control X, create a new document, Control N, and paste. And that's just going to hold those guys until I need them a little later. Now let's save this guy. Irish logo 2. So now when I cut, instead of selecting each one, making a cut, reselecting it, making a cut, I can do something really efficient. So we'll go get that knife tool. And I'm just going to cut from there to there. And I'm just using those ruler guides on each side of the letter. And then I'm just kind of traveling over to the next one. Press Enter. And I've just cut all those letters. Let's do it again. So down here, click, click. I'm just left clicking here. I might have to do something like this to get around that. Press Enter. We have all of those cut. Our angles got wonky again. So I'll press Escape to leave the knife tool. Press Control A to select all. Remove stitch angles again. And then on the stitching tab, I'll set my angle to zero. And that will make them all horizontal again. So the next step is to color everything. So I'll select this top group. And let's see, it gets orange. Select the middle group. It gets white. And the bottom stays green. Now I'm going to go grab my borders. Control, they're already selected, so I'll just do Control C. Go back here, Control V. Now I'm going to change those to green. Now when I copied those, and pasted them into the new document, they were pasted in the same relative position as they are here. So when I paste them back, they are fine. So now we need to do some color organization because if we look at the colors tab, look, look at what a mess we have here. Let's select all. We're just going to do the quick and dirty way of color sorting. And I'm going to click on this sequence by color. And I'm just going to let it go orange, white, green. And I'll click OK. And let's see what happened down here. Now, it still put all the borders last, so I might want to make it a little bit more efficient by moving the borders up after their last pieces there. And the H is actually two sections, so it gets left at the bottom. And we'll press Control S just to save. We're making some good progress. Now we want to get that shamrock to place over the eye. And we don't even have to digitize that. We just have to go find it. And if we go to the lettering and monogramming toolbox, click on monogramming, click on ornaments, add an ornament from motif. And I believe it was in this library, kind of down near the bottom. There it is. Select it. Select OK. I'll just select a middle position there, and there it is. And I'll press 0 on the keyboard to zoom out, move it up there, and it's just about the right size. I think I want to rotate it. You could mirror it if you want to. And another thing I did with this is I changed the angle on the petals. To do that, I need to break it apart because it is a monogramming object. So we'll do break apart. I'll zoom in on that by pressing B on the keyboard, dragging a selection. Break it apart again. Press H. And I'm just going to change the angle so that it's like this. H. Just dragging these little orange handles. Press Escape. H. And then I'm going to select all three of those petals. 
go to the Fill tab, and turn on Auto Split. And that gives it some nice dimension. And I'm going to group those. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Now all we have to do is the hat. And we are going to have to digitize that. It's not going to be too hard. I'll show you step by step how to do it. So I'm going to go over to this design window. We'll get rid of that. I need to have my grid on for this. I'm going to right click the grid and I want to change the grid to 5 by 5. I'll zoom in a couple times. Now I'm going to start by drawing an oval. So we'll go to Digitize Toolbox, select on the Circle Oval Tool. I'm going to click and drag down one box and out three boxes. Press Enter. Press Escape. Select it. Press it to Tommy. Now I'm going to draw some ruler guides. So I want a ruler guide about at the third of the way there and about a third of the way there. And I'm going to draw another oval. This time it's only going to be one box high. So find the middle, drag straight down and out. And that's the top of my hat. Press escape to get out of the circle tool. I'm going to drag that down to about there. Maybe a little higher. This is sort of a stovepipe type hat. So now we want to digitize a closed shape. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to start about on that center line there and about halfway in. Left click, right click, left click, left click, right click, left click, right click, enter. And if I think it doesn't look quite right, I can do some adjusting. It doesn't look too bad. I want this angle to go vertically. So currently we have the bottom sewing, then the top sewing, and then the middle. And to make it more efficient, we're going to move the middle up. Now I'm going to remove some overlap. So I'll select the middle piece, and in the Edit Objects Toolbox, I'm going to click on Remove Overlaps. Then I'll select the top piece, click on Remove Overlaps. I'm going to select the bottom piece, and I want to change some stitch angles. We'll click that, and I'm going to click Add Stitch Angles. And I'm just going to make some stitch angles like this. Press Enter, and there it is. Let's turn on Tree View see what it looks like. Not too bad, not too bad. Now we need to put our hat band on there. To do that, I'm going to go back to Digitize Toolbox. I'm going to click the Digitize Blocks tool. I'm going to select Black and just make a hat band right about here. So left click, left click, right click, right click, left click, left click. And you can tweak it up a bit and make it look more perfect. Now we need to put the buckle on there. So this time I want sort of a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to go to the Standard Shapes Library and I'm going to pick this one. Click OK. Just drag one out. I'm going to change that to a an outline and put a satin on it. And that's a little wide, so I'm going to take that down to 1.5 and I'm going to make it orange. I'm going to select all, press J to make them all closest join, and I'm going to group that. So I'll select it, Control C, Control V, there it is. Move it up, just kind of tilt it a bit. Click on it again. When I have those open squares, I can rotate it and just kind of hang it there on the top of the H. Is it the right size? Well, I think it's pretty good. So with the hat selected, I'm going to go to Edit Objects and Remove Overlaps. And if I move that, you can see that there are no stitches under there. So there's my logo. Now, of course, I would want to run the stitch player to see if there are any things I need to fix to make it run a little bit more efficiently. And I'm going to want to test sew this to make sure that everything's right before I sew it on anything.
So once you're familiar with the tools in Hatch, you can do so many things quickly and easily. It's just amazing. Thanks for watching. Please like and please subscribe and please make a comment. If you make a comment, let me know what it is you want to see. Thanks.